Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Cuisine Royale. If you enjoyed this video, please change your last name to Modest Pelican Gaming and then marry people, have them take your surname and then divorce and repeat, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. So Cuisine Royale was originally developed as an April Fool's joke, but is now an entire beast of its own. I love the origin story of this game. Basically, the developers took an existing World War II game they are working on and turned it into a battle royale to make their community laugh. Next minute, Cuisine Royale is rated 9 out of 10 on Steam and has a cult following. You love to see it. Also thick nuns, so definitely on brand for me being an educational Christian music channel. So yeah, I was really happy when I got talking with the legends at Gaijin Publishers about Cuisine Royale. And a huge thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. You can download and play Cuisine right now for free on Xbox, PC and PlayStation using the code in the description and pinned comment. If you use that code, you'll also get some exclusive bonuses and who doesn't love free stuff? Except for free chlamydia. Thanks, stepsister. Now though, I want to take you back to the beginning. My mate Stealth Omato and I decided that today we are going to get a win. What you're about to witness is quite the emotional roller coaster. First, we have to pick a hero. I pick this unit because he's a Viking. I buy some sunglasses for him and also a crown because every big boy deserves to feel like a queen. We spawn into the map and Mato looks just like me but malnourished and scrawny. I try to bash his head in with a baseball bat, but it seems friendly fire is off. Probably a great thing for our chances of success. I find a handgun in a nearby barn and further confirm friendly fire is definitely off. Man, I don't know why, but I want to kill Mato so badly. We continue searching this idealistic village for weaponry and I locate an MP-18. Fun fact, the MP-18 was introduced in World War I by the Germans and the MP stands for Modest Pelican, which is pretty incredible given my channel didn't even exist at the time. I head in to my local church to see if I can find some holy water to drink as I'm a thirsty boy. Instead, I find more loot and at this point I'm ready to take a fight. I also swap my crown for a helmet because even big boys get concussions. First though, Mato and I have a well-deserved pre-slaughter lie down as being properly rested is crucial for effective killing. I take the bed with the mattress as a power play. It seems there's been some light snowfall and I don't have a pair of shoes on so rest in peace toes. Mato has found a premium loot fridge and inside was a saucepan to cover his thick booty. A wise choice as my boy has one juicy ass and it'd be quite distracting for all of us. Feeling pretty confident, I begin to venture but then spot my first opponent, so I channel my inner Kaiser Wilhelm and gun him down. I just popped my Cuisine Royale kill virginity and it feels good. I wonder if Pong 400 will call me tomorrow or if it was just a one-time thing. I sort of want to meet Pong 400's parents, buy a puppy and settle down. Most importantly, I take his knee pads of speed. I am the speed now. Seriously, I am so fast. The pickups in this game are a real game changer. Wow, what great use of the word game multiple times. Game. We locate a Christmas tree and that sure is a fresh slice of festive spirit. Amato says he loves Christmas trees, which might be the most wholesome thing he's ever said. I proceed to shoot down all the decorations because if I can't kill him physically, I will at least kill his spirit. I can't describe how questionable this decision is as ammo is extremely scarce. We have another well-deserved nap, but this time with a little bit of snuggling because real bros snuggle. It's only weird if you make eye contact. Mato opens a window to let a breeze in as fresh air is underrated. I speed around the map at an unprecedented pace and then come across a bit of a crime scene. We loot it all and Mato finds himself a Cuban cigar which looks quite badass and actually raises his health by 10. So I guess the lesson here is that we should all start chronically smoking in real life. With the zone in closing, we decide to post up on top of a water tower which is incredibly poetic given my strong ethical beliefs around hydration. There's actually only four players left and winning our first game would be a great way to start off the day and a real confidence boost. We begin taking shots from the final two players and they get Mato, but I know exactly what I have to do. Use my unique ability. When you kill players, you harvest their souls, which is cute. And then you can use these souls for each character's unique ability and also to cast spells. I try to land on the rooftop, but fall spectacularly and slip off. I do, however, manage to down one of the final two players. 
Now using this momentum, I tactically gain map position, confusing and dominating my opponents, and we call this the snowball effect. And just kidding, I retreat into a nearby barn for a while, allowing him ample time to revive his teammate. And am then quickly gunned down, earning a second place medal. Wow. Alright, round two, and a change of character. I also pick a tactical outfit so my opponents won't be able to see my chest, legs, or the top of my head. A 1000 IQ play. There are two maps, and this one is the World War One themed Normandy in the French countryside. So we keep finding bunkers and machine gun turrets. I really want to have my World War One moment where I gun someone down in a turret. I also find another special item in the way of an IV bag which slowly regenerates my health. Now that's just smart thinking, the Australian military really needs to implement something similar. We see two dodgy malakas running away like cowards, and so we pursue them. With a kitchen mixing bowl on my shoulder, I'm feeling pretty confident. As not only will this deflect bullets, once I'm done I can use it to cook up a mean souffle. I proceed to engage, taking down the first chad. Enemy number two tries to evade me by jumping around a bit, but is no match for my MP40. GG well played. Moments later I die while looting. GG well played. Marto actually has a really good solo run without me and keeps sniping everyone. He's weirdly good at Cuisine Royale, but eventually he dies and we get a seventh place. I now feel like Marto's parents. Disappointed. Round three, and I put on a bikini because this not only appeals to my female demographic who might be looking for a new summer look, it also appeals to my male demographic who also might be looking for a new summer look. I do manage to get my World War I mounted machine gun moment and it's pretty spectacular. Only fifth place in the end though, we need that win so I have something to put on my resume. Round four, and we've got to start playing smarter, not harder. We unlock some spells, which will cost souls to cast, but unlock bonuses. For example, all enemies in the vicinity will have increased recoil, which is pretty cheeky. I'm also a big fan of Viper's dash ability, and I can definitely see this coming in handy. I find a waffle maker to cover up my booty shorts, which is great, as it keeps things family friendly. Amato then undoes this by drawing a penis in the snow with his footprints. Inappropriate, but his artistic talent is undeniable. We decide to bunker down, but then start hearing Lizzo being blasted out of a boombox, which is one of the pickups. You know that song? I do my hair, toss, check my nails. Well, I can't play it because of copyright, but it's surprisingly one of the most intimidating and unnerving war tactics I've ever experienced. I cast a spell to help give us an advantage. But with Lizzo living rent-free in my head, I proceed to die almost immediately. Round 5, and it's time to bring in our secret weapon, Crosby7885. He's the youngest in the group, and therefore I assume he'll be able to carry us to a victory. We're also playing the New Mexico map, which inspires me for some reason. We get off to a cracker start, winning several gunfights in a row. This is quite the action-filled round, with many altercations. But unfortunately, we lose both Crosby and our other random teammate, Dr. Lambig29. Dr. Lambig29 is probably shroud on an alt, so it's a big loss. Marto dies and it's just me, and then I kid you not, the words zombie apocalypse pop up on the screen and it's exactly what it sounds like. Someone has used a spell to summon a horde of zombies. I use my special ability to gain a height advantage and do my absolute best to win, but ultimately I die again. Second place. I think I'd rather come 10th than 2nd in a battle royale game, you know? So close yet so far, but I'm more motivated than ever. Round 6, and I predictably die immediately. But the boys gather my heart and bring me back via a campfire ritual. And I die again shortly after this. Nice. Again, Marto, who truly is proving to be freakishly good at this game, fights well, but is rushed by a guy with a pan and beaten down for yet another second place. Over the next 10 rounds, we start to really figure out our strategies and utilize our character's unique abilities wherever we can. It's an interesting game because it combines a serious feeling battle royale experience with some more hilarious elements, and you can really do well utilizing either playstyle. The more we play, the more spells we unlock and slowly but surely fail to win a single game. Seriously, we keep coming so close but just can't get that elusive W. It's been a real test for the boys boys boys. Round 17 and we decide to pull out a strategy that not many will see coming. 
Something so stunning and brave that we deserve international recognition for our intelligence. We decide to bring out the Thick Nun Meta. We will win a battle royale game using the power of squats and god. The enemies don't know what's hitting them as we rinse challenger after challenger. It's an absolute masterpiece and quite interestingly, our teammates die, but Marto and I, who harness the power of the Thick Nun, survive. Coincidence? I think not. I head over to a campfire to resurrect the boys and am exploded by someone who set up a frag grenade trap, which is such a sneaky stepdad play, but I guess GG. My friends have to go to bed because they sleep eight hours. Like what, are they trying to live a healthy balanced lifestyle or something? How pathetic. I play one duos with this guy and we vibe together in our bunny slippers. It's one of those moments where neither of us can be bothered talking in voice chat, but we're basically best friends forever and I can tell they're an absolute legend. Unfortunately, I'm not here to vibe. Round 19 and I want to get that win, so I head over to the solos playlist. I engage absolute sweat mode. I'm going to play this like it's real life and also damn, this lass can swim, what great form. Seriously, I'm about to set the record for the 50 meter breaststroke. While looting, I hear two players fighting it out and rather than running in, I patiently wait around the corner for one of them to die. While their guard is down, I burst around the corner and spray them down with ease. This is some guerrilla warfare. While I'm looting, someone tries to do a similar thing to me, but they miss their snipe. You can't snipe what you can't see. That would have made more sense if I was still in the camouflage uniform, but yeah, anyway, segue. I rinse a third player who's snooping around, but I wasn't joking about treating this like it's real life. I'm keeping a low profile and hunting down that win. Also, does anyone else suddenly feel like booty waffles? I survive until there's three players left, but rather than engaging, I instead watch on from the shadows as I know this is my moment. They both use their unique abilities and expend an enormous amount of ammunition and it's quite a spectacle. Honestly, they both fought so hard and deserve the win. Unfortunately for them, life isn't fair, and I emerge at the last minute, gunning down the final big girl for the most long-awaited battle royale victory of my life. I guess the lesson here is that you should ditch your friends and just do things by yourself, as they're probably dragging you down. Again, you guys can download Cuisine for free on Xbox, PlayStation and PC using the code in the description to get your bonus pack. It's always nice when games are free because you have nothing to lose and it's really good clean fun. Thanks for watching you absolute legends and a massive thanks to those who support the channel on Patreon. Until next time and as always, stay classy.